I am Ravi Vishweshwaraya Sharada Prasad. My friend Sugata Srinivasa Raju has just written a biography of former Prime Minister H.D. Deve Gowda titled uh, Furrows in a Field. The speakers at the launch uh, event in Delhi included the noted uh, jurist uh, Pali Sam Nariman, the former Chief Minister of uh, Jammu and Kashmir Farooq Abdullah, the Communist Party leader Sitaram Yachuri, and the former Union Cabinet Minister, my friend uh, Jairam Ramesh. Uh, Fali Sam Nariman referred to the statements of my father, H.Y. Sharada Prasad, where my father had said that H.D. Uh, Deve Gowda, being a frequent litigant, uh, had a sound uh, practical understanding of uh, agricultural laws, irrigation laws, and uh, civil engineering laws. And Sugata Srinivasa Raju had elaborated on these remarks of my father uh, in his book. And uh, Fali Sam Nariman quoted uh, other statements of my father from uh, Sugata Srinivasa Raju's uh, biography, where my father had said that if uh, Indira Gandhi had a better, uh, deeper knowledge of uh, constitutional history and uh, constitutional laws, then she would not have imposed the emergency. Um, however, Indira Gandhi's imposition of the emergency in June um, 1975 is not the first instance of subversion of uh, constitutional norms. And um, in this video, I will elaborate on how the, even the founding fathers of our democracy themselves blatantly violated constitutional norms and democratic procedures in their ruthless pursuit of power. Now, uh, this month, December, is both the birth month and the death month of uh, Chakravarti Rajagopalachari, uh, C. Rajaji, uh, who was born on 9 December 1878 and passed away on 25th December 1972. Um, and in his column for Asian Age um, and uh, Deccan Chronicle dated 14th December 2021, Mohan Guruswami wrote, while Nehru perceived the Hindu Mahasabha as the greatest threat to the nascent republic, Rajagopalachari held the opinion that the communists posed the greatest danger. Their differences came to the fore, and after being persistently overruled by Nehru on critical matters, Rajagopalachari submitted his resignation on grounds of ill health and returned to Madras. As things would have it, the Congress Party's poor performance in the 1952 elections opened another opportunity for him. The communists were in a position to form a government, but Nehru played his Rajaji card and got Kamaraj to propose him for CM. The party cobbled together a majority. So this is what uh, Mohan Guruswami wrote uh, in his recent article titled uh, Two Sides of uh, Rajaji in uh, Asian Age and Deccan Chronicle.
But Mohan Guruswamy, um, he's an alumnus of Harvard's um, Kennedy School, and he had served in senior positions um, in the government of Atal Bihari Vajpayee and earlier of uh, Vishwanath Pratap Singh. Uh, however, Mohan Guruswamy did not go into details or the very unethical uh, means adopted by the Congress party to form the government in Madras state uh, in 1952. And um, in my personal opinion, the methods uh, adopted to prevent a communist-led coalition from forming the state government were one of the most sordid events in our constitutional history. And the governor, Sri Prakasha, he too acted um, very disgracefully, in my opinion. Uh, there were 375 seats in the uh, Madras State uh, Legislative Assembly, which now consists of uh, the present state of Tamil Nadu and many parts of uh, uh, regions which are now parts of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and Kerala. And the communists um, had considerable grassroots support, especially in the Telugu-speaking areas of the old Madras state, um, as well as in the Tanjavur uh, regions. And the Congress party in Madras uh, state was split into numerous factions, all of which were at uh, bitter loggerheads uh, with each other. The most powerful faction uh, was led by Kamaraj, uh, Kumaraswamy Kamaraj, and they were largely the non uh, Brahmin Tamils. And then there was the Rajaji faction. And although Rajaji uh, Chakravarti, Rajagopalachari, he was not a mass leader, but many leading politicians, um, both at the center as well as in Madras state, uh, supported Rajaji because of his stature and his past um, record. Now, Kamaraj and Rajaji absolutely detested each other. Rajaji was an elite patrician, scholarly Iyengar Brahmin, and Kamaraj came from a very, very poor Nadar family. Uh, they used to climb coconut trees to retrieve coconuts, and uh, Kamaraj had worked his way up as a freedom fighter, having been imprisoned for several years uh, in the freedom struggle. Then uh, there was also a very large faction in the Congress party in the old Madras state, which owed its allegiance to Patabi Sita Ramaya, Bhogaraju Patabi Sita Ramaya, who had recently been the president uh, of the Congress party. Uh, however, this faction got completely wiped out in the 1952 uh, uh, Madras state elections. Uh, now, uh, in the uh, Madras uh, elections, interestingly, both the Dravidar Karagam and the uh, newly formed uh, Dravidar Munetra Karagam, both of them did not uh, contest the... January 1952 um, elections, the uh, Dravidar Karagam came to an understanding with the CPI, the Communist Party of India, mainly to oppose the Congress Party. And the DMK, uh, which had just been formed um, a few years earlier, the Dravidar Munetra Karagam, they supported the Vanyar community parties. Uh, there were two of them, the Tamil Nadu Toilers Party and the Common Wheel Party. But the Dravida Munetra Karagam, which had just split away from the 
Dravida Karagam, uh, neither of them uh, contested the elections. Now, in the uh, January 1952 um, elections, the Congress Party won uh, 152 seats to emerge as the single largest party, but falling well short of a majority in the 375-member assembly. However, most of the prominent leaders of the Kamaraj faction lost uh, their own seats. And the CPI, the undivided uh, old Communist Party of India, they won 62 seats. And the uh, CPI there was headed by uh, M. Kalyana Sundaram and P. Ramamurthy. Then, interestingly, there were also 62 independents and winning over these uh, 62 independents would be crucial for forming a government. Then the Kisar Mazdoor Praja party won 35 seats um, and this, the KMPP, the Kisar Mazdoor Praja party, had just been founded by Acharya J.B. Kripalani at the national level. And in the old Madras state, the KMPP was headed by T. Prakasham, Tanguturi Prakasham Pantalu, T. Prakasham. And T. Prakasham, he was earlier in the Congress party and he had actually served as the premier of Madras state in 1946, um, 1947. And T. Prakasham, he detested both Rajaji and Kamaraj um, intensely. And in 1946, uh, T. Prakasham had allied with Kamaraj, whom he detested, to prevent Rajaji from becoming the premier, uh, since he detested Rajaji even more. And he ended up becoming the premier himself. And during his tenure as the Congress premier in 1946, uh, 1947, T. Prakasham had persecuted the communists with the encouragement of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the deputy prime minister and home minister. But then Kamaraj overthrew T. Prakasham and then Mahatma Gandhi ordered uh, Prakasham to resign from the Congress party because there were numerous allegations of uh, corruption against T. Prakasham. So Mahatma Gandhi had Prakasham uh, put in his resignation from the Congress party. Um, yeah, okay. So to return back to the election results um, in uh, 1952 in Madras state, the Tamil Nadu Toilers Party won 19 seats and NG Ranga's Krishikar Lok Party won 15 seats and the Socialist Party uh, won 13 seats. And although T. Prakasham had uh, uh, persecuted the communists during his tenure as the Congress Premier, he now decided to tie up with the communists to try to head a coalition government, an anti-Congress coalition government. And this was even though he had lost his own election uh, in his own constituency. Um, and uh, in February 1952, the Kisan Mazdoor Praja Party and the Communist Party of India, the CPI, they together formed the United um, Democratic Front, and they issued a common minimum program. So it wasn't Devi Gowda's government which issued a common minimum program, uh, which was the first. This happened in Madras State in 1952. And this United Democratic Front claimed the support of um, 166 legislators, um, 70 from the CPI and um, CPI-backed uh, independents, 36 from the KMPP, 30 independents, uh, 19 from the uh, 
Tamil Nadu Toilers Party, six from the Common Wheel Party, and five others from smaller parties. So the DMK, uh, the Dravida Munetra Karagam, uh, which had not contested the elections, they supported the two one year uh, community parties, which is the Tamil Nadu Toilers Party and the Common Wheel Party in the UDF. And P. Ramamurthy of the CPI, uh, it was widely expected that he would lead the United Democratic Front and become the first uh, communist chief minister to be uh, elected democratically. I think anywhere in the world that this would be the first time a communist would have been elected uh, through uh, 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 democratically. And P. Ramamurthy was a freedom fighter uh, who had been elected from Madurai. And even after independence, he had was jailed uh, for being a communist. And in fact, he had fought and won um, the 1952 election from inside jail. But uh, T. Prakasham, he insisted on heading the UDF coalition, even though his own KMPP had only 36 seats in the 166-member UDF uh, coalition. And he, even though he himself had lost his own uh, personal uh, election contest. So the UDF coalition, they staked their claim uh, to the governor and uh, the governor was uh, Krishna Kumar Sinji, Bhav Sinji. He was the Raja of Bhavnagar uh, in present-day Gujarat. And uh, there was a panic in the union government uh, over the prospects of communists forming a government, that there would be severe security implications and an international fallout. And the Americans were believed to have taken up the matter with Indian diplomats. So the governor, uh, Krishna Kumar Sinji, Bhav Sinji, he very correctly and very properly wrote officially to the president, um, Rajendra Prasad, asking whether he should invite the Congress party, because the Congress party was the single largest party with 152 seats out of 375, um, or whether he should invite the UDF, which had claimed the support of 166 legislators, uh, keeping in view the mind that the UDF was a post-election alliance of disparate uh, parties. Uh, or whether he should impose governor's rule and governor's rule or president's rule had never been imposed um, earlier. Um, now, Mohan Guruswami, um, in his article, his sentence uh, where he had said, Nehru played his Raja G card and got Kamaraj to propose him for CM. This sentence of Mohan Guruswami is... Um, inaccurate because Kamaraj was actually in favor of the UDF forming the government and Kamaraj, uh, he calculated that a UDF government would uh, disintegrate uh, quickly because of its internal contradictions and Prakasham's uh, behavior and personality and that in the subsequent uh, midterm elections, Kamaraj uh, calculated that his own position would be strengthened greatly, uh, both against Prakasham as well as against um, his own rivals um, in the Congress party. Now, as was uh, required under the Constitution, President Rajendra Prasad um, officially asked Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to give him a cabinet advisory on uh, Governor Krishna Kumar Sinji Bhav Sinji's letter of referral. And the union cabinet uh, very 
cautiously decided not to respond to the president uh, in writing, but instead measures were begun by the union government to prevent uh, the communists from forming the government. And the governor, Krishna Kumar Sinji, Bhav Sinji, he was ordered to resign from the governorship. And um, there was this uh, politician, Sri Prakasha, and Sri Prakasha had just been elected to the Lok Sabha from Allahabad in the 1952 parliamentary election. But within a few days of his being elected, uh, Sri Prakasha was asked to resign his Lok Sabha seat and take over immediately as the new governor of Madras state, uh, which Sri Prakasha did on 12th uh, March uh, 1952. And uh, measures were set not just at the union um, uh, government level, but also at the state level to prevent the communists coming to power by hook or by crook. Uh, so Ramnath Goenka of the Indian Express, uh, who was also in politics, uh, Chidambaram Subramaniam, C. Subramaniam, and uh, T.T. Krishnamachari, they were vehemently anti-communist, and they requested uh, Chakravarti Rajagopalachari, uh, Rajaji, to come out of retirement to prevent the communists from coming to power, and Rajaji had long asserted that the communists were the greatest threat to the Indian nation. And uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, he was very, very cautious neither to publicly support nor to oppose this proposal of getting Rajaji to lead the Congress party. And Nehru very cautiously made a very lukewarm remark that he hoped Rajaji would manage to get himself elected to the Madras Assembly. But uh, Rajaji thought that it was below his dignity to stand for election. After all, he had been the governor general of the nation and then the union home minister. So he thought it was just below his dignity to contest a state assembly um, election. So C. Subramaniam, Chidambaram Subramaniam, he told the governor, Sri Prakasha, to nominate, to nominate Rajaji to the legislative council, uh, the upper house, uh, under the category of eminent persons having experience in social service. So on 31st March 1952, the new governor, Sri Prakasha, he nominated Rajaji to the Legislative Council. And the very next day, on 1st April, he swore in a Congress government with uh, Rajaji as the chief minister. And Sri Prakasha gave Rajaji three whole months to seek a vote of confidence. And the Communist Party of India leader uh, P. Ramamurthy, and um, he had won his election from inside jail. So P. Ramamurthy filed a writ petition in the High Court of Madras, and um, within a few days, uh, the Chief Justice Pakala Venkata Ramana Rao uh, uh, Rajamannar, yeah, uh, uh, P. Uh, v. Rajamannar and uh, Justice uh, Venkata Ram Ayer, they immediately dismissed uh, Ramamurti's writ petition on the 7th April. April uh, 1952. 
we must first dispose of the argument that it is the duty of this court to interfere under Article 226 of the Constitution whenever any violation of any of the provisions of the Constitution is brought to the notice of the court pro bono publico by any citizen. The petitioner, who argued his case himself, went to the extent of saying that even if the attention of this court was not drawn by any person, it was still incumbent on this court, so far as it was practicable, to interfere in this manner suo moto. We have no hesitation in not accepting this argument. It is certainly not the province of this court to interfere either suo moto or at the instance of any person whenever there is any disregard or violation or any of the provisions of the Constitution. Our power under Article 226 of the Constitution can only be invoked at the instance of a person who has a personal grievance against any act of the state in its executive uh, capacity which inflicts a legal injury on him. The petitioner developed an argument that he was personally affected by the order of nomination because if Sri C. Rajagopalachari had not been nominated but nevertheless had been called upon to form a ministry as the chief minister, then Sri C. Rajagopalachari would have had to face an election at the end of six months from the date of his nomination, and at such an election, the party to which uh, the petitioner belongs might have been able to defeat Sri C. Rajagopalachari. In our opinion, the petitioner is mixing up two things. What is actually impugned in this petition is the nomination of Sri C. Rajagopalachari and not the act of the governor in calling upon him to form the ministry. The latter act is not the subject matter of this petition, and we have grave doubts whether that action can be the subject matter of any petition in a court of law. So in any consideration of the validity of the nomination, we should completely omit any reference to the action of the governor in calling upon Sri C. Rajagopalachari to form the ministry. Now, in what way can the petitioner be said to have been personally aggrieved by this nomination? Surely, he cannot say that the majority which his party commands has been upset by this nomination. He is unable to specify any right, be it property right or personal right, which has been infringed in any manner by the nomination of Sri C. Rajagopalachari. It was said that but for the nomination, it would have been possible for the petitioner, along with other members of his party, to have formed a ministry. This is, to say the least, a very remote consequence of the nomination. We are unable to see any personal right of the petitioner, which can be said to have been infringed, even in an indirect manner by the nomination by the governor of the second respondent. Finally, the petitioner dilated on his right as a legislator to see that the nominations were made properly. 
we do not agree that the petitioner has any such right as a legislator, nor has he a right to see that Sri C. Rajagopalachari does not form a ministry which may be entrusted with the government of the state. This application must therefore be and is hereby dismissed. So this was the judgment of Chief Justice Pakala Venkat Ramana Rao uh, Rajamannar and Justice Venkat Ram Ayer. Um, and then Rajaji's government brought up support and engineered defections uh, and 15 independents joined the Congress party, taking its strength to 167. And the Vaniyar Commonweal Party, which had six members, it was enticed away from the UDF by giving it uh, ministerial posts. And uh, Rajaji also lured away the other uh, one year party uh, in the UDF, the Tamil Nadu Toilers Party, which had 19 members. Although they were not given any ministerial posts, but he got them to join uh, his, uh, uh, he got them to support his government. And although they supported, uh, they were supported by the DMK, they preferred Kamaraj to Rajaji. And uh, Rajaji, he also split N.G. Ranga's uh, Krishikar Lok uh, party and the defectors uh, from the Krishikar Lok party joined the Congress party. And moreover, all the five members of the, of the Madras State uh, Muslim League, who were very strongly anti-communist, they too supported uh, Rajaji. And Governor Sri Prakash uh, had given Rajaji three whole months to prove his majority on the floor of the legislature. And on th uh, 3 July uh, 1952, Rajaji won the vote of confidence by 200 votes to 151. And then again in 1954, the Congress uh, government in the state of Andhra Pradesh, that was on the verge of disintegration, and it seemed likely that the communists would be able to prove their majority on the floor uh, of the Andhra uh, legislature. And then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru he imposed President's rule to thwart the communists from coming to power in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, yeah, okay. So please uh, subscribe to my channels on YouTube and IGTV. And please follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. My Twitter account is at RVP, at RVP is my Twitter account, and on my YouTube channel, I will be uploading several more videos about politics, the economy, business and industry, and um, mostly about technology. <coughs> So please subscribe to my YouTube and IGTV channels. This is Ravi Vishweshwaraya Sharada Prasad saying goodbye on a very cold afternoon in Lahore and Spiti. Uh, it's minus 27 degrees uh, Celsius. Have a great day.